Hey guys, so a little update on me. I have been working full time doing a somewhat more physical type of job where I'm moving a lot more. Um, and with a chronic illness, it I mean, I'm very grateful that I have these medications. I know it's a little controversial to bring up what you're on, but I am on Corlinar. And if you look at people with POTS, it's almost like a miracle medication. It really is. And metadrine, uh, I, I, I ran out of metadrine yesterday at work and I felt like pretty bad. So it's, I'm very grateful for modern medicine and how much it helps, but even then it doesn't take away my illness. And so when I get home, I'm then tired. So I've sort of, I apologize. I don't, haven't had any, I appreciate those of you that chose to follow me and maybe liked some of my, probably more of my historical videos, I'm sure, but some of you do seem interested in the photo and everything. And I still believe in it. I, I don't know what Heavenly Father wants to do or go from here, but I still feel inspired to keep going. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. But when I get home, I'm still pretty, I am run down. I'm tired. So you can hear that and I'm sorry, but I'm hoping to, um, sort of get things under better control so I can just take care of my body better so that I just have more energy. I don't know, just making more effort, maybe planning more videos. Um, so it's been a lot more just winging it and trying to follow the spirit, but I wanted to bring up my website, theprofitscars.com. It, it's under the tab, Joseph Smith's vest, 1840s clothing styles. And, and why is this important? Um, cause if he's wearing clothing that was definitely never worn, not at all in style in the 1840s, then we know it's not from the 18, the image is not in the 1840s. It is very, very common for 1860s CDVs to have 1840s images on it. Cause that was a huge decade wet for daguerreotypes. Um, something different. I don't think I showed you guys was this picture. This is Ezra Taff Benson. But what struck me about this was the blown out collar. I'm trying to see, and this is a Diggory type. They don't state what year it is. Um, this looks similar. It's like that rough gold is an oval. So the matting looks very similar to um, like Emma Smith's old Diggory type that I have seen. And the Woodruffs, Wilford and Phoebe Woodruffs, Degary types. Um, but yeah, that background, it does look like, it doesn't, I wouldn't look at that and think, oh, well, this is Lucian Foster's background or anything. But um, this could have been an outfit he still had in the 1840s if it was 1850s to 1860s. I don't know. Um, I think they're probably just assuming or I see evidence that maybe this was taken in Utah. I just don't know. But yeah, white often doesn't even today photograph very well. And so that is one similarity. And the pop-down collar. My picture right there, it does have the blown out pop-down collar. And so it was a step that I was very much more scared, I guess, to take when I very first bought the photo. Trying to authenticate it other than seeing, okay, CDVs. Could an 1840s image be on that? And then I found Emma Smith's picture. And her image was from 1840s. Almost exact same type of paper CDV. Carta, carta de visite. Um, it's a French word. And I'm sure I'm not saying it right. Um, but I did notice that at the top of the page, this link doesn't work. So this is from the Wayback Machine. So this is what I found. And it eased my mind. I'm like, oh, I mean, here is a popped up collar, yes, and a big, huge bow tie. But you see how it's wrapped up and they've got this neck piece. And Joseph, even his journal, talked about having a neck piece. And in the Pioneer Memorial Museum, there's a neck piece. But what's this? This is 1840s. It's a pop down collar looking extremely similar to the pop down collar in my picture right there. Um, and other things that I had found was Abraham Lincoln. I just stumbled upon him after 
I had talked to the, I think I gave this link because when I talked to some of the church history library, I just bought, owned it a week. And, and they were just like, I don't think this could be 1840s. And I sent this link. They're like, well, that's a Victorian. So that doesn't count. And I'm like, what? Huh? It's from England. Is it styles in England or something weird like that? I mean, it just was very clear whoever I was. I wasn't getting in touch with anyone that was going to be nice. Um, they were just going to be argumentative and as negative as humanly possible. Which, when you're that negative, your mind is not open. <laughs> so, um, you know more than ever. You know, it just, I'm sorry. I apologize. Don't mean to criticize. Their mind was not open. Hopefully that's not a put down. But um, this is 1840s, you guys. Pop down collars were a thing. Um, and then you see the difference here with Abraham Lincoln. This is him in the 1840s, like 1845 or something, 46. They aren't sure. But um, pop down collar, but it's, it's very, not very wide, where it's like here's like 1860s, very wide and very low on the neck. But here in the 1840s, it's basically covering his jawline. Okay, if we look at my picture again. It's basically covering the jawline. So someone at the church history, I, in one of the emails, they're like, I think it's too low on his neck. I mean, I would say this is low on his neck. This is 1860s when he was president of the United States, um, Abraham Lincoln. But yeah, I found this and I think I'd, I'd already found it, actually. I was like, wait a minute. I sent them my video. Um, and, then, and then I was like, they're not even looking at my photo. Because some of the things they're saying, I'm like, no, that's not even in my photo. I, I Bye bye. I'm done. So I just didn't want to keep arguing for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It just wasn't a pleasant at all. Didn't feel the spirit. Just felt anxious. Like just like, ugh. Like I don't want to talk to this person. Um, and it just makes me sad that that's how it was. But some people are just, they just do that. They think they have to do that. Because they listen to Satan. <laughs> Sorry to laugh, but I don't know. This is Debbie speak. I do say things like that. Um, I'm, I don't mean that I think people are evil, but I just, and I shouldn't use that word. My mom always warned me when I was younger. She's like, don't use that word. Don't, don't even use his name. So I apologize for doing that. <sighs> I'd already made a video where I showed this with Abraham Lincoln. Um, showing 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. Uh, maybe they were looking at this picture of Abraham Lincoln. I just don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But um, see, see, one thing I find very common is that this, see, this is just a neck piece that um, the tie, you don't see it like wrapped around a bunch of times. There's some kind of something darker right there, but you see how this is. It's just very low in the neck. Um, whereas this is like a scarf. Um, it's very thick around the neck. It's holding that neck, even though it's popped down, it's covering his jawline um, very high up. Whereas 1850s here, it is like super thin, almost like that exact same piece, but now it's lower on the collar. And he's got this very fat, very starch looking bow tie. And then Abraham Lincoln by the 1860s. So again, I think my whole point was like, hey guys, what about this? This is not England. This is Illinois. And guess where Joseph Smith was? In Illinois in the 1840s. Who was also in Illinois in the 1840s? An adult Abraham Lincoln. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So by the 1860s, very low on the collar. Someone they were saying that my picture, the, the collar was too low on the neck. No. Um, but the similarity here is that you can see the evidence of, well, there's the bow tie, but he's got something wrapped around quite a few times. And um, this looks like the painting, to be honest. Um, it's very different. You see something a little bit different here. Um, this is was sketched in the 1880s. It's obviously not from life. Um, and, and you can go through this. So I, I need to... Almost every link on my website, I think it's all going to go to the Wayback Machine because so many of these links just suddenly just stop working. And yeah, but this is artwork from 1800s, victorian.com. Uh, it's really unfortunate that website seems to be gone. 
Um, but here's some more men with these pop down collars. And this is according to librarycongress.gov. So this is a very reputable website. They're, they're stating this is 1840s right here. It says 1842 written on the back of the frame, November 25th, 1842, Daniel Ruggles and Albert Child. So it has very strong provenance that in 1842, there were pop down colors. And this is a lot of these often, I see a lot in Joseph Smith's pictures, artwork of him in the 1842 time frame um, is that his collar is more like this. It's sort of not always totally popped up or popped down. It's just sort of hanging out there, but, um, but it's very high up in the neck, you see. And they've and got this scarf again wrapped around several times. Then it's tied into a bow tie. Whereas obviously today, men, it just goes around their neck once and is low on their neck. And, and yeah, so it's a very unique trait right here that is very 1840s. Um, and just the fact that this is the collar from the Pioneer Memorial Museum showing this um, but again the, the reason that this is important is this helps to date the image obviously the piece of paper is did not this piece of paper that I have did not exist in the 1840s but it was printed the right place the right time um very similar looking carte de visite as Emma Smith. So, and that was the other thing. Could it be, does a carte de visite debunk this as a photograph of Joseph Smith? No, because this doesn't debunk this exact same style of carte de visite um, of Emma Smith and baby David Harm Smith does not debunk this as baby David Harm Smith, who was a baby in 1844, because that was when he was born in November. Um, so you see here, he was born three months after his father was killed. So July, August, and so was it really October? If I read it was November, I don't know. But it was Julia Murdoch Smith's handwriting. And in her own verified F Smith family album. And yeah, every, everything I've been talking about in my other videos. So the whole Providence side, that's what's um, taking years. And been a lot of hard work, a lot, on my own. And I know you guys could help me. So please do. Please reach out to me as a friend um, if you find some supportive evidence. Um, I will be hesitant to just argue with anyone. I think it gets a little tiring. Again, I don't, and I'm not a channel with, like, five of my best friends or, like, a whole production team. Or Obviously, I don't have that many views, so that's not happening, you know. Um, and those people can sit there and laugh about all the mean comments and just brush it off a little bit more easily, right? Um, but to me, it was just a waste of time. And um, I don't want to waste my life, my time. I talk to people, for sure. You can reach out to me and I will talk to you if you're a nice, intelligent human being. Um, but yeah, just check out my Providence page. Watch my other videos about everything. How Emma Smith was also in the same county, same area where this was printed. Possibly around the same time it was printed, late 1860s, early 1860s. Either way, the only thing we know is there's no sun stamp. So it's not um, during those two years or so when, when those stamps were required on photos. Because there's no stamp there on the back. Um so I'm very grateful for Godwin Weaver, but here are all these letters from Emma Smith. Talking about trying to get a shadow taken, getting a negative. Like, she gave him the translation of the Bible, Joseph Smith's translation of the Bible. I, I bet he was trying to get his dad's picture copied. Um, if anything, maybe to make money. I, I don't know. I have not had my negative taken yet. I do not know. So I've this was... This cost me thousands of dollars to just read these letters, you guys. So be kind, be nice. Um, 
a lot of people have not been. But um, here is David Hiram Smith. But a lot of people have been nice. So I just got to focus on the good. I've been feeling better. For the most part, it's really great to get away from, uh, I mean, horrible people. <laughs> so hope to stay away from mean, horrible people. But they're everywhere. I know that. I know that. But sometimes people in larger groups are very mean. Um, but yeah, this is such a good picture of David Hiram Smith. You can see his very, very high forehead. I think it's a common, it's a similar trait that he had, I believe, with his father. Um, he looks very, very uh, gaunt and underweight right there. I'll just say that his mental health wasn't good and he probably wasn't taking care of himself. They uh, really realized he might have had really low blood sugar. I don't know. I'm not a total expert on everything, everything. Obviously, I'm not in Salt Lake City touching and reading every single document, but even those that allegedly are uh, miss things, you know? Human brain can only hold so much information in their conscious memory, right? But this is what Emma Smith's talking about as a photo car hoping one comes through Nauvoo, um, but then she went ahead and went around that time. She was trying to get this done. She did go to, um, that's why I pointed this out, to Plano. So here she is in Nauvoo, goes there. So timeline of Joseph Smith the third, um, he was, came here in 1866. And so my picture was possibly printed either in early 1860s or late 1860s is what Colin Gowan Weaver concluded. Copying a daguerreotype because it does not match the background lighting or quality of the stamped name on the back of the picture, which is J.S. Bippins. Um, again, I'm not going to go and show every single detail of that, but Emma Smith went with David Harm Smith in 1869 and went there. Um, Alexander was there in 1869, had a child there, and Joseph Smith III became a widower because he lost his wife and a child, and it was really traumatic. So I think the whole family's like, well, we're going, we're coming. She'd been talking about it, and she, she, I mean, her letters never state. She has letters before and after 1869. None of them really showed evidence. All the thousands of dollars I spent just to be in Salt Lake City, mainly to read those letters. Um, yeah, and, and there she's talking about looking for Fred Bishop's car, she talks about his photo car, I can come up here and show you a little bit more, It was a letter from David Hiram Smith saying thank you for coming. So she for sure came in the 1870s. So she was she wasn't too old to travel. I mean she'd made several treks, you know, back breaking treks throughout her life. Um, just getting on a wagon and just crossing one state and not multiple um, was, was was something she was willing to do back then think how fortunate we are to be able to just jump into a car here she's talking about trying to get it there it is a negative taken I'm trying to look for Fred Bishop's car I'll try to get the negative taken um, yeah she's talking about getting a photocopy and you guys <sighs> and Elisha Bibbins the father of J.S. Bibbins, who printed my picture, he knew her. He knew the whole Hale family. So, in that whole Bibbins family, J.S. Bibbins being the photographer that printed my picture in hell, he d for sure did hold it. Right? That's the only thing I know for sure. And it ended up in a Smith ID family album, which wasn't super convincing to, say, the juvenile instructor in March. Was it March 30th? 2009 back in 2009 um but before they saw the ebay page it was convincing whatever the images were in there 
or very convincing to someone dole out maybe at least a grand and not even not not a, being able to buy my picture because he probably wanted I would bet he wanted four hundred thousand dollars I don't know I wasn't online looking and back then I I didn't care about any of this in 2009 but um it's clear that the reserve was not met and an artist partial tried to buy my picture but um for ten dollars and that wasn't, he wanted a little more than that. And so he wanted about 400 grand in 2017 for a different picture. And he offered me mine for a hundred and then tripled it. But, um, but you know, you consider every, everything, I've, all the, so the travels, um, getting authenticated, traveling to research, keeping the website up. That's been at this point probably a thousand dollars in and of itself at least to have my old and this website because there's a yearly amount that's a few hundred and I've kept it up and I've made no money from my YouTube channel or that website um it's been nothing but a sacrifice so to accuse me of not Trying to seek out truth is ridiculous at this point. Um, obviously, I believe I would not be spending money like this if I didn't believe. But I have I just trust in the Lord that um, some good can come of this. And again, thanks for following my channel. If you are more interested in historical stuff, I apologize. I haven't been feeling super inspired to get into too much. I don't, I'm not big into thinking of like trying to argue with people or I don't know. I just want, my whole intent is to protect someone's testimonies, member of Church of Christ, Latter-day Saints, but there are a lot of lazy learners. Someone was like, oh my gosh, are you even active? Oh my goodness. I saw the titles of your videos. And these are people that are not on the internet long. Like you would see, they probably look at Saints and Script and think it's an anti-Mormon channel, right? Or uh, War Radio. Um, that's a whole other can of worms. But um, I think they've been, I've had, um, been a little more impressed with their type of content lately. It's been a little bit better. Um, a lot more interesting. I like Stick of Joseph. I like a lot of these other channels. Um but I do think Saints and Scripted and Stick of Joseph generally are trying really hard to be more, to talk and act like missionaries, um, or how, like, the church would like you to talk and act for the most part, which is not a bad thing. I'm not a huge fan of the channels that are super negative or super into speculating. So they did talk a lot about, so I'm in my 40s, but I do remember when I was early in college, there were a group of friends from my hometown and some people that I would just start hanging out with just a couple of times. I mean, we would sort of talk about, but this guy had um, some interesting books. Back in the day that people actually read books, you know, but um, it was a lot more speculative and then we decided not to do that because the church said not to sit and speculate, even though it was super fascinating to talk about really obscure things I'd never heard of Joseph Smith saying and um I don't know yeah I don't know but you know is it whatever floats your boat if you still feel peace and comfort that's fine but I think too many people are looking for like a high and something exciting and they're waiting for the exciting cool stuff like it, it's already here you know um people have just got to keep just don't cast your pearls before swine. Just don't, you guys. Still just, just very, um, been a very hard, even just this year. So hard. I keep thinking, oh, things are going to get so much better and be so much easier next year. And, and just how life is, things do get better and harder all at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm struggling, guys, with my health and um, finances and things. And like life is just really, really hard. And it is for everyone. Um, you know, but if, if you've struggled with 
like a bishop that's said horrible things and still wanting to come to church um just know i'm there with you i've been there i've had some experiences with some bishops i i don't think any human should ever talk to anyone that way back in 2017 um that was one of the worst it was just really literally shaking and just how did I open up to a bishop about abuse and just did not care um but the approach and just how he it just was so oh it was disgusting it was the most disturbing conversation I've ever had but I've never wanted to leave the church. I never have. I've never gone inactive. But that was one of the most painful things I ever went through. And the Holy Spirit said, Debbie, here's what we're going to do. Go look at the word boundaries. What word are you actually in? He's not your bishop. According to these boundaries, just go to, go to one some boundaries. Just leave. You don't ever have to talk to this guy again. Never did. Um, and I did ask him never to talk to me again. Because he just kept texting me. And I was just like, Oh, and I had an almost similar experience a couple of years ago. Uh, not as bad, but it was just like, what are you thinking? But this is the Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints is not led by perfect people. And even our prophets are, one thing we do teach is to not be, and Joseph Smith said in Revelation, so it's Jesus Christ speaking to Joseph Smith that we're not supposed to be counseled in all things. We're not supposed to be inspired in everything we do. But I think, unfortunately, too many people take that another way to where they don't really seek the Lord enough. And unfortunately, it just happens, you guys. It doesn't mean the church isn't true. It just means that that bishop in 2017 wasn't sitting there praying or listening to the Holy Ghost. And he wasn't bishop very long. I don't know what was wrong with him. I had no idea what was wrong with it, but something was very, very wrong with that man. But um, I have to forgive him, so I will publicly state, not his name, I forgive you. I hope you get the help that you need and that your spirit gets healed and that you never, ever talk to anyone like that again, which is what I said to him. That's the best I can do. <laughs> but um, If something opens up about abuse, you just, you don't, you, there's some things you just do not see, and you do not yell at someone, you do not shame them. Oh my goodness, he did. It was just not a nice person you, a lot of other I'm sorry I'm still not sounding Christ like you guys but I forgive him and I all you can do is just when people are like that is just be as nice as you can but sometimes you do need to just get away from the spirit I had a good feeling about that and I liked my next bishop he was not perfect none of my bishops have ever been perfect but I still go to church right um I just ask bishops out there, just seek the spirit more because that's what President Nelson says to do. Like, don't always just rely on your opinion because it's crap half the time, (laughs) you know, or I don't know, you know, and, and, and a lot of times bishops are just probably just think they're in charge of the financial side or just, uh, you know, just, I'm like the manager of the word, you know, not always, I'm here just to manage and not remembering I'm here to be guided by the Holy Spirit and I have the mantle and I can see revelation. And so as, as I've told this story many years ago, um, not totally dissimilar experience, but this guy had a lot more human decency, did not say anything remotely as horrible, but he just was not being super nice. And I was trying to literally, I won't go into details, but like I just witnessed this bishop I think it was what twenty. There was really just like three years before that. Um, but I really believe he was a good guy, uh, and I was in his bishop's. Both experiences were in a bishop's office. Um, but I just felt the spirit leave, and it just he just didn't. He was just you know getting into that manager. I don't know. I don't know if I'll help you. Um, with something or other, and um. I said, okay, fine. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'd, I'd had a. Bishop helped me with a similar thing before. I was working two jobs, but I just needed help. And I said, you know what? I don't like arguing. I don't like contention. And 
I, I feel like you're trying to, if I keep talking to you, it's going to go that way and I'm going to leave. And then he just paused. And I just could see whew, almost like lightning strike him. And he started speaking revelation of things that I'd only said in prayers in my head. That were from Heavenly Father. And he started to cry and he apologized. Oh, he apologized. And um, I didn't really meet with him again. <laughs> I, he didn't really help me. But he did help me at least that he, you know, showed me the power of the priesthood. He's not lying your bishop's opinions and words. You just have to have hope and faith that these men are good enough that from the 12 to the 70 to a stake president that the right person is called that hopefully hopefully they can seek the spirit and choose to through their agency um, but sometimes with that mantle it, it'll just hit them and it isn't it's like with Brigham Young and I, I had that experience and then I felt good and okay about going to the comment section of YouTube and people were talking about Brigham Young and I gained a testimony of Brigham Young as a good man but it was by understanding this experience with Bishop if that makes sense Brigham Young same thing I could but you can see it on paper but I could see it because I saw it before that you know Brigham says things that are just Brigham's mind and he even says that but you see it and then all of a sudden you see it just Suddenly, you can tell that he's now being a vessel for, Heavenly, for the Lord to speak. And now the Lord is speaking. Um, and I know Nelson says not to do that, but it gives me hope to think that. And I apologize, President Nelson, for feeling like I disagree with you. But I, my testimony would be hanged by a thread if I believed everything that my bishop was always right. You know, it's just not. And sometimes they are totally not doing what they're supposed to. And then they could end up being a stake president and they're just doing things that doesn't allow them to fill the spirit, receive revelation at all. Not that they're horrible monsters or bad people. I don't want to speak, bring up specific stories, but I've heard quite a few. Um, and that is hard, but, and I have to be careful not to be a hypocrite myself because sometimes I say things that are totally not inspired by the spirit. You know? If I'd follow the spirit two years ago, yeah, I would have ended up in a bad situation. But to follow, it was, it was just felt too hard physically. I'm like, I physically can't, you know, and I totally regret it. Like, if I'd broken both of my legs, I'm like, you know, that would have been so much better than going through what the hell I've been through and how people have treated me. I apologize, President Nelson, and my stake president, everyone, I just said the word hell, but um follow the spirit you know and even president monson talked about times that he followed the spirit times he didn't and it's just a test for every single one of us and i just bear my testimony you guys that the church of christ of latter saints is true it is led by a prophet and the priesthood keys are here and the priesthood is a wonderful beautiful blessing in my life and it can be in yours but not every man that has a priesthood is perfect and not every woman that has motherhood in her, as I'm sure you do explain, even if you don't have children, you have motherhood in you. Um, but we also have priesthood, you know, we do have priesthood power as women. President Nelson has said that and it is true. I've just, we do. It's different. I, I don't at all. You want to know where I, I don't want to go baptize anyone. I don't want to be on the stand. I don't even like looking up at the people on the stand half the time. Sometimes I wish people weren't sitting up there. I wish there was just the speaker and then they, I don't know. Like, who, who cares? Like, I do not care who stands, is on the stand. Like, that literally 100% has to do with pride. That people care about that. Like, status. Like, when did that matter? Um, wearing pants at church I've seen that a lot um, in one word I've been in lately and that was, that was different I'm pretty judgmental about that though I don't know 
but you know, we're not the Duggars. We're not expected to wear skirts every day. And I'm grateful for that because I was a gymnast dancer, like on the playground. I was like, if I wear a skirt, I can't do anything during recess, you know, <laughs> like it's hard to, you know, there's just, there is a certain freedom and it is nice to wear pants. And I don't think anyone's going to get in trouble wearing pants. There are men in, um, some tropical island places that, um, wear skirts and a name tag and a white shirt because that's our culture and they're a man, but that's our Hawaiian or Polynesian culture to dress that way. So, um, yeah, that was a long tangent. So again, I apologize. Hopefully in the future I'll have more planned videos if I just feel inspired or have energy. It just, it takes so much energy. And all this research has cost so much money. <laughs> if I did not believe this or if this was fake, it wouldn't have gone this way. You know that. You are not a very smart person if you think that I'm like just trying to make money. Like if I wanted to make money, I would have found a way to make money, right? If that was my goal. It's not. My goal has just been to follow the spirit. And today the spirit was saying, you know, talk about clothing. And, and five minutes before I realized, okay, I need to change the links on my website. So if someone's curious to click on all these links, they're not working. Basically, everything's going to end up linking to the Wayback Machine. So they're going to, Wayback Machine's going to get a ton of money. All these stupid websites that their links are just not working. But you guys, conferences this weekend, we get to listen to prophets and I am grateful for Elder Iring in that he see how much longer I have before my computer dies a little bit a second right <laughs> um in 2005 I found out that he too is a prophet he's not the prophet but um they received revelation and had an amazing experience just being in the same room with him I've had a lot of incredible experiences that are so special to me and I do have my boundaries you know some people if they're about to destroy my testimony I am my goodness this person I thought had really helped my testimony I could feel that they would could easily destroy it recently this summer I'm like I, I can't talk to that person again you know I have to protect myself spiritually and emotionally um there's just a lot of people that are I have cut off that spiritually, emotionally, I just, just, to me, they're not safe to talk to. You. I know it sounds totally selfish and I seem so mean, but, um, you know, I'm a daughter of God, of my Heavenly Father who loves me and I love him. And if he tells me, you know, Debbie, don't, don't mention that woman's name. Don't quote her. Don't share this and that. You know, I'm like, why? 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 It's like, okay, fine. Let me show you. <laughs> A lot more similar to Michelle Stone than you would like to realize. Uh, it's a sad reality. Gosh. But I, all I can do is pray for that person as well. Um, yeah, I'm not happy to know that anyone's that dark. Spiritually or that mean. But some people are. And I, I hopefully will just, I have better internet. I've been feeling a little bit better. And I was very sick recently on and off. And just physically, it's been really hard the last few months. Because just a lot of changes and then just extreme fatigue and really tired. Like when, I, when I'm working full time, usually I just have an energy to do any other projects. But I'll try. Um, hopefully I can fit in a video or two here and there and that are hopefully planned and better quality or ones that people actually will like and actually click the like button. Um, but yeah, please like and subscribe. Um, it's not going to make me any money anytime soon, but keep me in your prayers. Um, and I'll just try to keep even my enemies in my prayers that just a lot of messed up people with a lot of drug problems and problems with, like literally criminal history some people 
that type of people went after me. And it's sad once I guess some people are just so bitter they get they see instead of a jail cell, um they they just I think there's maybe a level of bitterness that maybe just doesn't go away after people have certain types of problems. I don't know. So they just are capable. They're always going to be capable of a lot more meanness um, once they've seen the harsh realities of the world or made some really terrible choices. I don't know why people are so horrible sometimes. It's definitely best that you don't go that way. But I do want to say, express and state I do have compassion for people that have, you know, maybe broken the law or had drug problems. Um, some of them have turned out to be astounding people. Just more compassionate, more kind than anyone, you know. And I have even friends just over the years that have had totally different standards than me and maybe not even members of the church, but they have more light than some members, you know. But, uh, but drugs are bad. <laughs> Let's just remember that. So stay away from them. Uh, take your mental health medications. Take care of your brain. Take care of your body. Um, watch General Conference this weekend, you guys. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it doesn't make me cry the whole way through as it did last time. I just got really triggered and just kept, I don't know. It was just... At that point, that was a whole year of like, this is so hard. Life is just so hard. And it just is for everyone. But it was, life was really hard then. Six months ago, it, some things sort of let up. But I just hope to keep away from scary people. Because there are a lot of people that, that's the only thing I'm guilty of is being scared of some scary people. But then you find out you're not the only one that's been scared of them. Okay. Anyway, have a good day.